the SiteGround webinar about GDPR. Uh, my name is Christoph Ponjarov and I will be moderating this uh, this webinar. And here with me today is uh, Maya Stianova. She's our senior legal advisor. Welcome, Maya. Hello, and thank you very much for the invitation. It's a pleasure to me to be here and talk to you today. Thank you. So Maya has been handling our entire efforts for uh, being GDPR compliant for all our companies. As you know, SiteGround has offices and companies in Italy, in Spain, in the United Kingdom, and the global one for the entire world. So she has hit every possible problem <laughs> linked to... So far. <laughs> yes, so far. <laughs> so far. Um, so, I was talking about GDPR. It's the hot trend here. What exactly is GDPR? The GDPR is a general data protection, protection regulation which regulates how the personal data of uh, individuals who are residing or are citizens of the territory of the European Union. Uh, the main principles of the regulation is to process the personal data of uh, individuals in a fair and transparent way. And this regulation will come into force on May 25th, 2018. And it's a uh, uh, the regulation, which uh, uh, it's not extremely new, I want to uh, mention that the, the requirements of the regulations are not like all of them extremely new, but they are more restrictive and uh, giving of the consent in, in on a different way than before. So uh, let's start from the beginning. Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, personal data is being regulated by GDPR. Yes. What does personal data mean? Personal data means like your full names, your identification code, also your email address, also all information related to your physical, political and religious view, for example, also your domain and also IP address and photos, etc. So if you can, based on the data that you have about me, if you can link to me as an individual, that's personal data. Yes, it's very, uh, when, for example, we have your names and uh, this cannot be considered as a personal data, especially if they are publicly uh, For example, if you put your names on your website or something like that. Uh, but when uh, we use your names together with your phone number and email address, and in this combination, all of this in defines you, identifies you, this can be, this is considered as a personal yeah, that's that's really important to say about uh, private and and public data exactly. because I was really worried about people like Madonna share <laughs> and so on that they could be very easily identified because there's not another one in the world, right? Yes, correct. And Madonna aside, what about domain names? Is domain a personal data or not? No, domain names are not personal data. Okay, that's that was straightforward enough. Yes. Uh, what does it mean that you said that that's a, re a regulation by the European Union? Does this mean that only have companies within the European Union have to comply and or not? Who actually needs to take care to think about GDPR? Not only companies which are registered and servicing individuals who are residing with the territory of the European Union, but also all other companies who are providing services to individuals who are in the European Union. So this is something which needs to be taken into account because the GDPR is not only for European companies. It's for all companies who are providing services to European citizens. So how do you identify a European citizen? Because somebody may say, hey, my website is towards, it's uh, focused towards, let's say, North America or Canada or uh, Australia. I'm, I'm not targeting Europe. Uh, how do you, how can you know if, uh, if there are European citizens amongst your, your users? You can use it, easily identify them through the IP address. When as uh, IP address is uh, uh, personal data, so when the IP address is coming from Europe, then you can be sure that this can be the person who is in the European Union and uh, respectively the GDPR will apply to. So if you're collecting data about people, even if their IP address is only the only thing coming from European Union, that means you have to comply. Yes, correct. Good. That, that's, I, I think that, hand, that covers a lot more websites than only companies in the European Union. Yes. So uh, I guess my next question would be how, how a website owner would know if they're actually processing data. 
So they need to uh, start, for example, uh, uh, as we discussed, the IP address. This is something which can be considered because even though if they're not collecting personal data of uh, uh, and stuff still if they have the ip address they need to consider this they need to consider also uh, in case they have a form which their visitors need to fill in this is something which need to be considered and of course what data they need to collect from those individuals who will fill in the form also they need to consider uh, their relationship with third parties. they need to consider their uh, for example if they are using social media facebook twitter and these factors need to be considered uh, in they need to make an analyst in order to be sure uh, if they process personal data if not if they need to comply with the gdpr or if they don't have this obligation so basically when we have uh, i'm saying we because i do ha i do have a lot of websites myself when when a website owner uh thinks about whether they should or should not comply with gdpr they need to think about whether a they have a visitor from european union Correct. and b if they're processing any data for that person Correct. if they're storing yes and Correct. Using like anyway. email address names etc so gdpr is something about that all the data has to be processed in a fair and transparent way what does being fair and transparent mean Fair means that the company needs to process the minimum data they need for services. Uh, in case they want to, and they are filling the form, the individual, and they, the company is asking for the social status, Mr. or Mrs. This is not necessary for the providing of the service. So this means uh, to collect the minimum data which you need for the provisioning of the services. The less you know about the person, the better, right? Exactly, That's yes. That's good to know. And as it comes to transparent, all companies need to inform in advance the individuals and users for what purposes they collect data, for what purposes they process this data, for what purposes they will store this data, for how long. So as much as you can be uh, informing them in advance is better because they will be aware what to expect and how their data will be treated, which is something and the end user will be aware of. So that, that in my perception is uh, the regular people, the regular internet users, a lot of, a lot more protection against yes. violation of their privacy and so forth. Yes. Uh, GDPR states eight, eight specific uh, rights for the person. Uh, to be honest, they're written in a bit more legal way, and I, I don't as think always, as always, uh, as always, <laughs> yes, uh, and I don't think they're quite easily understandable. So let's go through all of them, okay, and, and you can t tell us a bit more about each one of them. So the first one is the right to be informed. What I need to be informed about? You need to be informed about how your data is by a company and how your data is stored and for how long, etc. So in case you want to exercise these rights, you can send an inquiry to a company and they, according to the GDPR, they are obliged to respond to this inquiry with the, within 13 business days. The second, that's, that's clear enough, uh, but the second one kind of overlaps with the first one, the right of access. Yes. Why is that different? It's different because in case uh, you your client of site ground. In case you have your use, you have the user area, the accounts. So the right of access when you're ex exercising this right, it's simply to go in this user area and to simply check what information you have in your account. This is the basic difference because in the beginning, when you want to receive information, you need to send an inquiry. But then you can easily exercise this uh, right uh, in the user area. And that leads us to the third one, the right uh, of rectification. What yes. does this mean? Again, you have the right to go and in case your information is not complete or in case you want to amend something in your information because it's not up to date, you can go easily again and exercise this right. So that's, that's actually, let's say, in your account, the ability to update your, let's say, last name if you got married or exactly, something like that. Exactly. Okay, that's. Uh, I guess that's a. What about the right to be forgotten? That's that's a really hot topic yes, right now. Yes, this is the hottest topic so far. 
So the right to be forgotten, how you can exercise this right? In case you decide that you want to terminate your agreement and you, of course, you don't want your data to be processed anymore, you're contacting the company and asking to exercise these rights. But still, I want to explain that this is not an absolute right. Uh, companies are required by the legislation to keep some personal details, for example, some parts of the invoice uh, for a client for a certain period of time. And this period of time is different in every jurisdiction. So uh, it's not so easy just to go and to push the button, delete all. Yeah. So let me get this, if I am getting this right, if, if I request from your website to be forgotten, you can keep the data about me, but only let's say for the needs of the tax authorities exactly. and not use it for anything else. Exactly, correct. That, that's great. Uh, what's the right to restrict processing? So the right to restrict processing is connected again in case the company asks not only for the minimum, but extra information connected with your social status. Uh, for example, in case they uh, require you to fill in uh, Mr. or Mrs. in the filling in the order. So you, you have the right to say, no, I don't want to access this information for me. Because this information and this personal data is not the provision of the services. So again, if you, if you're collecting only the, what you actually need in the first place, you, you should cover for that one. Exactly. And what about um, the right to data portability? The right of portability is connected with the uh, right of the user in case he decides to change the company and in case the company already collects some information and have this information to have it in a, a transferable file and to transfer it to another company. So if you're switching platform operators, you can request one of them to send all the information about you to the other one and stop using it. Yes, correct. I guess that that's something that would <laughs> cause a lot of development work to, yes, to people. for sure. What about the right to object? The right of, 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 to object is connected uh, in case you have and you gave your consent to receive promotional emails and in change at a certain moment your mind. So you have the right to object this and to say, hey, listen, I don't want to receive these emails anymore because I'm not interested. So this is this right gives you this opportunity. And uh, in, in that case, uh, an easy way to unsubscribe, let's say, from a promotional method should be enough to suffice. And yes, there can be a specific tool in the email or unsubscribe options. It shall be. It enough. just has to be clear and yes, exactly clear and. Last one is uh, rights in relation to automated decision making and. So this right uh, is connected for, for instance, in case I decide that I want to buy shoes and for this I go and visit a website offering shoes. Afterwards, uh, suddenly I start to receiving thousands of advertisement connected with different kinds of shoes. And uh, um, of course I want to stop this and I want to stop this unwanted advertisement everywhere. So now the user have the option to go in the browsers, in the preferences, and just to adapt the preferences in order to stop receiving those unwanted Or the social media, right? Exactly, on the social media. So that's actually the ability to people, people to control the remarketing they have been yes. exposed. Yes. Uh, yes, uh, that's, that's really a good, good list of new rights that European citizens and a lot of other people are getting uh, but every uh, almost in every one we're talking about consent yes that's probably the most used word in the entire legislation yes. what does consent mean and how you can make sure that you're that you have gotten consent in the proper way first you need to be sure that the consent of the user is given by freely and easily way this is something which is very very important and uh, I want to mention that when the uh, client and the company have contractual agreement, they have contractual relation between themselves and the information and the personal data they are processing is connected with the provisioning of the service, the consent is not needed because you're processing this personal data only for the purposes of the agreement, but nothing else. And uh, when you want to have the consent of the user for something additional and for something else, you need to have the explicit consent. 
because this is something which is not connected, for example, as a, a for the provisioning of the services, if we are talking about the contractual relationship between the parties. So let me get this straight. If I want to sell you hosting uh, and I need your name, email and the credit card number, for that information, I just need you to agree to our privacy policy in terms of service. But yes. if I want to send you, a, let's say, a newsletter or promotional material to you for other services that we offer, marketing in general, I need to have a separate question yes. asking, hey, do you want me to send yes. you that material? And it's, uh, it should be noted also that this consent cannot be uh, compulsory. And for example, when you're giving your consent for the a privacy policy terms of service cannot be at the same place and cannot be uh, predict. For example, in, in case you are providing a consent to provide you the service because we need to use your data for the billing and other purposes, you cannot predict the consent for the newsletter, uh, emails, promotional materials, etc. So you can't just add a line somewhere on page 48 of your yes. endless legal and agreement. This like. cannot be. Uh, requirement in order to proceed further with your order you cannot uh, urge the user to give its consent in order to proceed further with the purchase of the service or to penalize them in any yes way. we've seen a lot a lot of campaigns that actually incentivize people uh saying hey uh, subscribe again for our newsletter and we'll give you let's say ten dollars in uh, merchandise award or some or awards that's that's okay right Yes, it's uh, maybe you mentioned, you notice that there are many campaigns which are uh, taking again and re uh, taking a reconsent of the users and to side ground will do the same in order to be on the safe side that you have actual consent of the user and it's freely and easily given. So if, okay, uh, let me summarize uh, and let me know if I have missed something. If you want to send the customer information or additional from the product you're actually selling, you need their explicit because, agreement. Yes. You cannot pre-select those. You cannot group them. Yes. You can't hide them somewhere in, in a, a additional privacy policy, for example, and to rely on this consent because otherwise, in case the client say, uh, "Hey." Uh, you didn't get my consent for those promotional uh, emails, uh, the company will be the one who needs to prove that they really, really get the consent. So you, you as a company need to say, hey, you have clicked this checkbox, which was not pre-selected, and you have given your permission for us, and then give me the ability to unsubscribe. Yes. For example. That's great. Uh, okay, there are a lot of things, and. I'm getting the idea that every business is different and has to apply different set of changes to their uh, legal agreement and so on and so on. But if you have to say, let's say five things uh, for each business owner, what are, what are the most important things people should consider when it comes to GDPR? When it comes to the GDPR, the five things which every business needs to consider is how and what kind of information is processing afterwards when they make for example uh when it comes only for a website who have uh, only visitors but it's not collecting personal information such as name email address and other information still needs to consider uh if it's collecting the ip address which is if, uh, which is considered as a personal data also every business need to um to review and to update it if necessary the terms of service other privacy policy and other related policy in order to be sure that they are GDPR compliant. Uh, also to make sure that the employees who have access and processing the personal data signed non-disclosure agreements, confidentiality agreements, and they, uh, they are aware of the uh, obligations and uh, reability which they have on the GDPR. Also, they need to consider their partners and subprocessor and to be sure that they also uh, comply with the GDPR. You, you mentioned partners. I'm, I'm very much in the WordPress uh, uh, context of things and uh, th that's my main focus when it comes to work and in general. So, uh, for example, in, in the WordPress context, uh, will a plugin that I'm using for a certain service be considered a third party partner. Let's say if I'm um, 
that's something that has been discussed today. If if I'm using the Gravatar service, I'm sending them my my users' emails. They check whether that person has an avatar, an image of them, and send it back to me, so I can show it on my website. Do I need to make sure that Gravatar is GDPR compliant, and what if they're not? Yes, you need to make sure, and in case they're not GDPR compliant, you can simply sign an agreement in order to be sure that you will put all the rights obligation of both parties and all other requirements which are relevant to this relationship in order to be sure that you are GDPR compliant. So let's let's hope they they will update before May twenty fifth. Because Hopefully. That, Hopefully, otherwise that would mean uh, a lot a lot of contracts back and forth. Yes, um, but my observation is that most of the companies they're working so hard on this project and they're GDPR compliant. Yeah, most of them. Every every bigger company actually we we, we mentioned Gravatar, but I think Automatic they which are developing it they have. Uh, a blog post about their efforts about GDPR compliance, and they're actually going to be. So, uh, but in, in any case, I guess a general advice would be if you're using, if you're sending data to any service, check their developers' personal website, data, data. personal data, yes. yes. Check their website, check their main site, see if they're GDPR compliant. If not, see if they are up to the standards and you can make a contract, just, just, just check. Yes, it's always good to be proactive it yeah. never hurts uh, what what about cases of breach in security and personal data does does every uh, hack on your website means that there is a data breach what 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 about personal data being stored the regulation is uh, uh, stating that it's not, not every case it's data breach. So every case needs to be analyzed case by case because the regulation uh, state that only this breach, which is affecting negatively the personal data of a user can be considered as a data breach. So every case sh shall be analyzed. And also in case, of course, there is a data breach, hopefully it never happens, but in case there is, there is a responsibility for notification within 72 hours. This is according to the GDPR. It, and you need to notify the authority. I want to mention that in every member state, there is authority responsible for data breaches. So every member state have a different authority. And in order to be more easier, every company needs to implement and maintain a data security breach procedure and also registered in order to be prepared this is something which is not so scary so don't panic just implement procedures and be ready in case something happen to be ready and to know what to do and how to do it how does SiteGround fit into this picture uh, uh we are a hosting company and we're store storing your data but your website gets hacked who you should inform first do you need to inform SiteGround for this yes you need to immediately to inform SiteGround and also uh, to be sure that this is a proof data breach but i urge you in case there is proof data breach to inform us as soon as possible in order to proceed further we we have a special team for that right yes we have a special team for that who will handle all of these requests and since we started talking about bad things what about penalties? We had uh, previous uh, regulation by the European yes. Union that that's known as the cookie wall that wasn't, let's say, enforced very much yes. and kind of left in the air. What about G GDPR? Are there any penalties? Yes, to be honest, for me, it's quite shocking because in the worst case scenarios, the penalties can be up to 20 million or 4% of the annual revenue when it comes to a group of companies. So it's quite shocking, but still, if you're complying with the requirements of the GDPR, we, we would be safe in this case. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, that's indeed a, a huge number, but again, that's, that's the worst case scenario. Yes, and if you course. put a bit of an effort to check your site, check your service, if you shouldn't lose Worry a lot so. of sleep. Yes, over. and you should not worry so much. 
Okay, I, I mentioned that SiteGround has a specific uh, role in the entire process because we are a hosting provider and uh, again, your data is stored on our servers. So uh, what about the connection between SiteGround as a hosting provider, you, for example, as a website owner and your customers? I want to say uh, that we start working on this project one year ago. So the relationship with the data we process of our clients, such as email address, etc., which is needed for the provisioning of the services is covered in our privacy policy. We tried to be uh, as clear and as understandable for the user. And also we drafted data processing agreement, which covers also the uh, relationship between our clients and what they're hosting on the servers. So uh, those privacy policy and the data processing agreements basically covers what we are processing for how long, how we store it, also uh, the relationship like obligation and rights of both parties. And all of this is covered in those documents. So people should focus more about how their website links to their visitors and not worry about SiteGround because we will be 100% Yes, and we are taking care of this for more, more than one year. Well, well, well that's great. The only thing I'm thinking right now is that we kind of uh, broke the GDPR rule by emailing our customers about we the webinar. We don't because it's still not 25th of May. Okay, we, we have about a week, so we're still we are on the website. with the legislation. Well, well, thank you very much for that. I think we have covered everything thank we have prepared much. for our it visitors. Was a pleasure. Now I will go through. I will go through the different uh, questions that we have from our okay. customers, and um, ask. Now, the the most I don't know. It's a bit strange. Um, maybe should have mentioned it better. But the most prominent question is whether there will be a recording. Yes, there will be a recording of the webinar. Uh, we're gonna post a new blog post tomorrow or Monday, and we will share the video of that webinar across all our uh, social media channels. Uh, the second, the second uh, question is from uh, Ted Reuter. As a WordPress specialist, it would be great if you could provide a list of recommended plugins to help manage GDPR compliance. Uh, I guess that's a question more more for me. Uh, thankfully, uh, WordPress plugin developers aren't very creative when it comes to naming their plugins. So right now, there are two plugins that are widely used. Uh, it's WP GDPR, and the other one is simply GDPR. So both, I think, both cover uh, simultaneous use together, or one of them covers the majority of functionality that you may want to use to have but um, make sure that you check your specific business. Um, there is no plugin that can, with a single click, make it GDPR compliant. There is no plugin that can uh, write your privacy agreement. You need to actually pay a bit more attention about that. Uh, furthermore, WordPress itself uh, is not GDPR compliant yet but there is serious work towards that. There is a, a GDPR uh, group uh, within the WordPress uh, original Slack. Uh, there will be a GDPR talks at work camp of the upcoming WordCamp Europe uh, conference in Belgrade in June. And uh, there are different groups. I mentioned automatic. Um, almost every company in the WordPress ecosystem and other big CMS ecosystems out there is working towards compliance. So again, Check the software that you're using and see if its developers are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Um, will the an, a question from Anna Hey uh, again? Pardon if I don't pronounce your name correctly. Eastern European here. Sorry for that. Uh, will there be sample wording for website that covers GDPR compliant privacy and cookie policies? Yes, yes uh, for sure there will be, our main aim is to have the 
most easy and uh, understandable way for privacy policy, cookies policy, etc., in order to be easier. So people can actually copy the site ground privacy policy, adapt it to, to their needs? Honest, no, because this is copyright. <laughs> so not copy, of course, but they can have the main idea, the main structure, so they can see what they need to cover. And then, of course, adapt it to their businesses because every business is different from each other. So they can see the structure, think what is different in their perspective when it comes to their business and adapt it. So generally, see what the big guys are doing, check their privacy policy, adapt it for your needs and use it. Exactly. That's and make right. sure that you're not violating copyrights. <laughs> so no, no exact copy pasting, yes, I guess. No exact copy paste. Um, for the questions that we won't be able to to answer right away, I will be adding those in um, in in the blog post. So there there are uh, more specific questions about whether a name like like the one from uh, Rachel Quirk does an email account for under the scope of GDPR if it has emails from customers prospective customers that includes their name and email address. So I guess if somebody sent me personal information over the email and I am storing that email, I need to consider that? Yes, correct. You need to consider that and to make sure that at the moment with, when you don't need this information anymore, you will delete it because you need to process this information as long as you need this information. Afterwards, you need to make sure that the information is deleted and it's not stored anymore. So keep your mailboxes clean guys, yes. delete, delete old emails because if your email password is stolen, somebody could access exactly. the name and contact of your, of your friends, basically everyone, you, you know that let's say Gmail or other uh, services more proficient are storing way more than an actual yes. email. So, so that's really something. In case you don't need this something. information anymore, just delete the email. Okay, that's that question. Um, Another question from Jerome. I have multiple websites hosted at SiteGround for my clients. What should be in the GDPR contract I make for these clients, which is not already dealt with in the contract I have with SiteGround? Do I have to refer my client to the SiteGround privacy statement or not? My advice will be again to check very carefully what our privacy policy and other relevant document states to adapt it to your business and make sure that that it will be in compliance with the GDPR. So make sure that, uh, but in my opinion, don't refer to our privacy policy, just adapt it to yours. It will be so easier. So our privacy policy is between us as a hosting and company and, and Jerome as a webmaster. He needs to have privacy policy with between him and his visitors yes, if order, he's collecting personal exactly, data. Exactly, in order to uh, inform them in advance how he's collecting the data, for what purposes, and how he will store and for how long. And to be honest, it will be easier for me if I have this information on Jerome's website, if I'm not uh, transferred to another site, because this will be uh, difficult for the user and yeah, confusing. That's... That makes sense, but yes. uh, there's uh, another another case, I guess, in which if he's uh, building websites for customers, then his customers actually follow the agreement between SiteGround because they're the actual owner, no matter that he has created a website. Yes, it's true. Okay, I I, I think we covered that one uh, pretty well. The next the next question is um, from from Mary Jane. My site is a low traffic WordPress hobby site. I don't sell anything or run any ads. To what extent does GDPR apply to me? Will I be covered by the privacy and cookie policy I purchased through, I don't know, the website, uh, which lists all the services I use? So if there's a website that's not selling something, do they still need to think about something? It's important to know that in case they're not selling uh, anything, but they still collect some information like the IP address, they still need to comply with the GDPR, GDPR compliance because this is again personal data. So they need to be aware if they are not processing and collecting personal data while they are 
selling services, but still to be sure what IP address or other things which can be. So in that case, half of the work is done and they only need to do, take care of internal procedures, uh, have a log or something. Yes. And if they get checked, have somebody who knows what they're talking exactly. about. Exactly. Okay, I, I hope that answered the question uh, well enough. I ha we have another question from from Ben Woodorpe. I have an email list which I send tips to every two weeks. Uh, this list has been built up slowly over time by adding attendees from face-to-face -face training courses. The attendees were told at the time they would be subscribed to the tips list I given the the option to unsubscribe at any point the list is based on business email addresses is it okay for me to continue using my email list to send tips to do i need to do anything else to be compliant thank you to be honest since he collects all of these emails through uh, different conferences and etc it will be better to uh, resend and to uh, have again the consent and to include the option in case they change their mind to have the option to withdraw this consent. He already has the subscription option, but I guess he needs to get their consent again. Yes, in the same email when he gets the consent again to be sure that he include the unsubscribe option. So I guess another email to yes, this list. Yes, in order which... to be on the safe side. So they have something on paper. Exactly, because paper. in case they want to withdraw or they told that they withdraw their consent to say, hi guys, listen, I send you this email on this date. That, that makes sense. Um, we have a question about, uh, a question from Sarah Woods. How does SiteGround store automatic backups that contain the personal data of site visitors and what do we need to tell visitors about this? Um, that's more check. That's more yes. store our backups on a completely different website. Oh, web servers, I'm sorry. And uh, those are very, very well protected servers and the access to those servers is restricted. So. Honestly, uh, the only person who can use them is the account owner through the through the backup restore restoration uh, tool, and people should not really worry about it. We're making everything that's required and, and more, even before GDPR, to make sure their backups are safely stored on uh, on separate locations. So again, don't worry about this. We we got you. We got you covered. Um, a question from Mr. Mason. Uh, hello from the United Kingdom. I'm deaf. Will there be caption subtitles for me to access to a lot of infos? Your reply would be great. Uh, I really hope that we manage to add subtitles to the YouTube recording, um, at least in English, uh, yes. in, in the upcoming uh, week. Um, next question is from... Um, even is there an open source template or something similar with which web devs can use to craft basic easy to read policies and terms of service agreements i guess that kind of overlaps with the yes. first question yes again they can see the structure of our terms of service privacy policy and another related policy and to adapt to their needs and uh, specific business and sector I think at some point someone will eventually put up a free template about privacy agreements and so I on. I guess after 25th of May for sure they will be, but for the time being, because this is the hottest topic. Um, I'm, I'm really not aware of any of any such free template. No, no. Most of, most of the lawyers out there try to charge about it. Yes, exactly. Uh, good time to be a legal person. Uh, okay, uh, Melinda has a question for us. What constitutes opt-in? For instance, if one of my website visitors sign up to be sent a copy of a free ebook on my website and it's told that by signing they are agreeing to receive my newsletter, is that opting in? As we discussed, the purpose for receiving the newsletter, if it's not connected for the uh, provisioning of this book, it needs to be a separate and explicit consent. So let me get this straight. If I want to download the book, I can agree with the terms of service of that book, yes, uh, in copyright order to and whatever, book. in order to download the book. Yes. But if she wants to send me emails after that, Which there needs to connected. be, 
which are which are not the ebook, right? Yes. There has to be a separate checkbox that I must click separately. And... Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So yes, I guess you that covers all freebies out there, right? Ebooks, templates, uh, teams, uh, plugins, whatever that that collect that data if they want to advertise something to you later on. They need to have a separate exactly. checkbox. Exactly. If it's something conditional, then the book you need explicit consent. Okay, we're getting tons of questions. Uh, I am. Yes, they're really. And so. um, I will again. We'll try to answer as many as possible, but the, we won't be able to answer all of them. And those that we don't manage to answer will be covered in the blog post. But we still have time, and uh, we'll try to cover as many as possible. Um, if a ref has uh, a question, if I don't promote or collect data from European Union, will it matter to comply my site with GDPR? Again, it shall be noted that if the data is connected only for the European citizens, uh, how this process person of their personal data, you should be GDPR compliant. But in case the matter is not connected to the rights of the European citizen, then the answer is negative. So if they don't have a single visitor from the European Union, they should not care about GDPR? Yes, correct. Okay. Uh, but they need to prove this. It's important they, they need to prove this. In case oh, there is inquiry. Yes, that, <laughs> that, that's important notice. Um, Ian Nelson has a quick question for us. For a simple Joomla site with contact form, what is needed for GDPR? I guess we talked briefly about this. It depends on what the contact form is used. Exactly. If and it's used to send the webmaster an email, that's not private private information because you're not storing it into a database exactly but if you're storing that information and let's say doing something with it you need to and send emails advertisement you need to have another checkbox exactly okay that's that's covered um next question is from Moreda. Our website has a contact us page with client inquiries that is stored in the background pages of our website. Is this anything to be considered about, concerned about? Again, I think it's the same case. If you're storing that data that you get from the form, think about the data. If it's only a mean a communication method. It's always to it, be as transparent as possible. This is the best, best advice. Okay. Um, tons and tons of questions. Uh, next one is from Marco, uh, how can I prove to my customer that I deleted his or her data hosted in SiteGround? Uh, will you provide a log of access data and data deletion on my database hosted uh, in SiteGround? For example, I use your PHP admin service on the cPanel database. Um, it's generally a better idea to be able to have, let's say WordPress has plugins, the GDPR plugin for WordPress, they're similar to other uh, uh, CMS application that keep a log of what has changed and provide the customers with uh, the functionality to delete their, the data that you have to store about them. So in that case, I would say it's, of course, if we get an inquiry, we can, we can check the logs, we can give you the logs, but it's much easier, much faster to have a plugin that takes care of this because you can literally go to the log copy paste a single line from your WordPress backend, let's say, and give it to the customer as a proof. Yes. I, I hope that answers your, your question. Um, how, how long will the webinar last? Hopefully we'll try to fit within an hour or until we answer all questions, but we have so many that I, I really doubt that. Uh, okay, uh, next, next question is, um, Interesting, it's from uh, John McLaren. Because most sites use Google Analytics on their site, uh, which collects and uses personal data, how do sites need to adjust to comply while still using Google Analytics? So um, every user has the right to exercise the right to, uh, uh, for example, to restrict the Google Analytics from the browser and the preferences. So this is something which every user has the option to do it and it can be very easily and 
uh, to be honest, I'm not a technical person, so I cannot uh, uh, explain in details how to exercise these rights. But for sure, it can be uh, deal with the browser preferences and settings. I th and I, th I think furthermore that a uh, lot of services like Google Analytics, they will be GDPR compliant. For sure. And yes. um, what services of that type are doing is there they're anonymizing a big part of the data they're collecting so eventually most of the data that is stored and analyzed will not be personal data you'll be able to get trans information but for segments of people you won't be able to trace to individual and uh, i i wouldn't really think cons uh, consider myself and the worry about huge companies like facebook like google like uh, bing and twitter uh, because um, imagine four percent of google's annual revenue, <laughs> annual revenue that they will do everything yes, on a group yeah. level they will do anything and they will be more compliant that we can ever think of so usually you should you should you shouldn't worry much about that um next question it's from uh, Lynn Hunt. I got rid of any membership on my Joomla site ages ago, purely due security concerns. However, I use Discuss and other plugins. What kind of information do I need to include in my privacy document for these and where do I get the information from? So uh, it really depends on, on the actual use you have of these plugins. Um, in case of Discuss, you need to make sure they're GDPI compliant because Discuss gives you the ability to have comments on your website, but in order in order for the, your users to uh, have a Discuss account, they need to provide personal data. So since you're you're not you're not actually uh, giving Discuss that information, the customers are doing it directly because it's embedded in your website but if if your registered users are using it and so on and if that's linked to your database users you need to make sure that discuss or gdpi compliant or any other plugin that you're sending information to uh, next question uh, we'll be answering is from russell Hello, the initial goal of my website will be to grow my email list by providing free ebooks to my niche market and then options in my sales funnel to purchase extended version and sell my paid services via email marketing, etc. How do sales funnels work under GDPR? Would forcing someone to sign up to my email newsletter to get the free ebook be against the principles of GDPR? Uh, yes, because uh, the purpose of getting those emails and newsletters is, is different from getting the ebook. So, in order to be safe and to comply with the GDPR requirements, you need to get explicit consent for that. Otherwise, you are putting yourself in a risk. So, basically, during the download process, he needs to have a checkbox which the user must click in order to receive the any other marketing materials and not only not only to click but in case he clicks and after one or two months he decides and change his mind he has to have the option to withdraw his consent so he he must provide his customers with all the rights that we discussed previously yes and it shall be freely and easily uh, not only for the consent but also for the withdrawal okay uh, next question uh, it's from Simoneda. I'm wondering what a small personal blog with contact form and space for comments has to do. Again, we covered this. Yes. Think about the data you're storing, even if you have visitors from, if you're storing statistics for your visitors, which include their IP addresses, this is personal data. You need to take care about this. And even if you don't have to do all the development work to add check boxes, consent, and so on, at least take a look at your uh, privacy policy and make your organizational efforts to comply with the in-house stuff that, that you have to comply with. Uh, is it possible to view the webinar later? Yes, I'm a 
Uh, okay, the next questions, question is from the Yan G. Uh, I'm about to sign up to be an affiliate with the company and have clickable links added to my blog. What uh, precautions do I need to take and what should I do apart from just disclose that I have affiliate links with my, uh, with my blog? It should be the same steps uh, as we discussed. You need to make sure what information you're collecting by those links and to make sure that it's uh, the same mark in compliance with the GDPR. But actually, if, if, she, if she has links on her blog, that lead to a company with an affiliate program. Actually, the company with the affiliate program must be GDPR compliant. So they they responsibly keep the data about which affiliate the person has. If this control. is the case, yes. If this is the case, then the answer is different. Yeah. So yes. my advice would be make sure that the company that you're referring your visitors to is GDPR compliant. compliant. Uh, if, to be honest, if there's a problem with that, usually they will be the one responsible in that case because you're not sending personal information directly to the other company. You're just putting a link to them. Somebody is clicking and willingly giving their information if they want to sign up. So the 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 legal and um, the the way the weight of having to be compliant is on their end. So in that case, I don't think she has in, nothing in to worry about. In case they are not GDPR compliant, it's always a good practice in case you're worried to regulate this relationship by agreement. Yeah, I, yes. I, I guess the, each affiliate has an agreement because they have to take their money anyway. Yes, of course, but to be sure that this is regulated there. Okay, next, next, next question. Um, Next question is on Weasley. WordPress is working hard to make itself GDPR ready. What is it we actually need to do ourselves? Surely as we use WordPress for all our websites, they will take care of GDPR. No, there again, there is no WordPress update that's gonna cover everything. There is no plugin that gonna cover everything. Uh, take a look at your particular website. Take a look at your particular uh, methods and policies and procedures. How you Take a look at your orders, if you have orders, signups. Think about what information you're collecting for your users. Make sure, as Maya said, store the minimal information for people. If you're sending any advertisements, marketing materials, make sure that you have explicit that person's consent. explicit consent. consent. And um, yes, WordPress core services like Akismat, Gravatar will become GDPR compliant. Um, there, I mentioned two plugins, that will be GDPR and GDPR, uh, that will help you add the necessary checkbox in commands, in uh, links to your privacy policy, uh, provide with a log of actions that will help you be GDPR compliant, but there is no single button action that will cover everything. Yes. Uh, Judy from Canada. This policy is very close to what we have in Canada, but I'm wondering if you could speak to any effects this may have on how we use Google Analytics. Since the IP address is personal data, do I need to state on my website that we are using Google Analytics? Again, we already had that question. Just take a look at Google's blog, see what analytics is, is, is working towards it. I think they will be 100% GDPR compliant if they're not already, sir. So. Check out, check out with analytics, and but as a general rule, huge companies like Google, they will be, they will be compliant for sure. Okay, we have time for a uh, few, few more questions. Next is from um, Mary ba Balandit. Sorry if I'm getting your name wrong. Uh, I got my blog started on WordPress. I don't have a newsletter or contact form, just a feed burner feed and to subscribe through feed burner and blog login. Do I uh, all parts, do I do all parts of GDPR compliance or just some? What if I wanted to get MailChimp in June? Would they restrict that if I don't do that part or what? Could you explain step by step for beginners need to, what do beginners need to comply? because I'm very confused about all this. Okay, that's that's another one for me, but um, 
first you need to know how feed works. Uh, if people subscribe to your feed, that's a willing action. You're not sending the feed to them without their consent. They're pulling their so the software they're using to read the RSSS feed. Uh, you is actually pulling the data from your website. So that should be safe. On the other hand, if you're using MailChimp to email your users, in that case, you need to make sure that you're fully GDPR compliant. MailChimp is for sure. Uh, there is a blog post in their uh, blog. You can read all about it. Um, it uh, MailChimp is one of the one of the services that can really be trusted on. They will give you anything in terms of subscribe boxes and so on. So you get so you collect those emails in a GDPR compliant way and then allow the people to unsubscribe if they want to. Basically, using MailChimp is really a safe way to maintain a healthy newsletter list. Uh, next question is from, from Richard. Uh, does SiteGround offer a simple checklist to audit a website for GDPR, GDPR compliance? So far, we don't. We, uh, I don't think we have prepared such material, no. but I would, I would bet somebody would eventually prepare something like that for free. But uh, note that it's very different. I just want to uh, say that it's very different because every business is different. So we need to be uh, sure that this audit will comply with the requirements for your business. So this is really something which needs to be made by a consultant who will be in-depth in your business. To be sure that you will be yes uh, we're advice. we're trying to give advice to people to show you uh basically our goal today is to tell more about what is gdpr what's the side ground role in it what are the basics the principle basics. of it but um our advice would be to get a legal person to take a look at that and uh, get a proper consultation from somebody if you're concerned that your business may not become one. Yes, and always to process the personal data in a fair and transparent way, which is easily understandable by the user. Okay, I think we answered that question. Um, the next one is very interesting. It's from uh, Warren Garnet. Garnet? Uh, how GDPR policed? If a website is in violation, what is the penalty? What organization has authority to enforce GDPR? So in case you uh, notice that uh, G uh, the website is not GDPR compliant, of course, you can always uh, make a complaint in the authority. And when I'm referring for the authority, I'm referring either for the authority in your member state or either for the authority of the uh, member state where the company was registered. Of course, there are penalties, but they need to make an investigation. They need to take the final decision before they proceed to penalties. And uh, in every country, that's something we talked about before the webinar. You said that in every country there's a there's a different structure that that can make checks and uh... yes in every country so far i can tell for spain italy it's completely different one from each other for example in uh, spain they will inform you before they come and investigate your company but in in italy is different so every member state differs from each other when it comes when it comes to the uh, practice of the authorities and this is something uh, which is not uh, active and not uh, implemented yet so now it will be interesting for all of us to see how they will work yes there are a lot of things that yet yes, to be seen i mean exactly. we still have time until may 25th but uh, something interesting you mentioned if an american company working in europe uh, for example uh, has a complaint uh, they need to contact the american authorities and they need to contact the european country responsible how's that working out they will contact both of them and the user will be the one who will choose which authority to contact, but uh, they, in case the uh, company is registered in the European Union and uh, complaint is in the United States, the United States authorities will contact the European one. So they will work closely together. So it will be something challenging for sure. 
because yeah. especially when it comes uh, for language difference and stuff so it will be really challenging for example the italian uh, authority to contact the english one because my observation is that the italian in general they don't speak english not all of them but the authorities which i contact and for example the information on the website is uh, in most cases accessible it's in not italian. translated yes so this will be a challenge for sure and if you receive let's say a complaint in german are you obliged to reply in german yes you will be but you can of course always reply in english as well because uh, if the company is registered in united kingdom and the required the inquiries in german you can also of course reply in both languages okay that's that's an interesting clarification we we will um uh we have we're almost out of time and um we'll answer one more question and we'll get to the to the we'll answer the other ones uh, as mentioned in our blog post uh we have one from uh, nusri as a service provider is siteground checking monitoring over the website for gdpr also how can this how can this make effect on other parts of the world uh, Again, we talked about this. Uh, we, we will be 100% GDPR compliant. We, we will monitor everything that we have to, but there is no service that we can run on our servers to check for websites if they are GDPR compliant or not. This is the responsibility of the website owner. And we really urge you to take a look at your website, see how, see what visitors you have, what users you have, how you're storing data, if you are following all the practices required and then take the appropriate actions. There is, uh, we can't simply come up with something like the web application firewall that we have to protect you against hacks. We cannot make our customers GDPR compliant automatically. We will just urge them because this is something- Yeah, we can inform you, yes. we, we can cover our part and we have 99% of that is already done and it will be 100% by May 25th. We're doing our part. Uh, we'll try to inform you as much as possible. And that's one of the reasons for that webinar to raise awareness about GDPR and to urge people to, to be more informed about it. But again, there is no single click solution. There's no automated solution. No one will be able to do this for you. So take care of your website, take a look at it, pay attention that's that's the general rule uh we're out of time uh thank you all for the amazing questions thank you very uh, much thank you maya for you. your expertise i i really hope that it has been a useful webinar again there will be a recording of it we will be posting it in our social media blog post and we will answer your questions in the blog post that we couldn't manage Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. and bye-bye. Bye-bye.